Have you ever thought about equality in education? You might be surprised to find out that the schools are not being treated equally in America. Every child should have the same opportunity when it comes to receiving an education, but unfortunately, there is inequality when it comes to funding when it comes to schools. If children are our future, it is time for us to re-examine education in America to realize investing in education is investing in our future. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. We call ourselves a Christian nation. We should have been concerned about the health care of every individual in America. Yeah. We should have been, been concerned about the economic um, uh, unbalances in America. And we should have been just as concerned about uh, Shaniqua's school or, or about Bobby's school. I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They, we should have equal concern. Every school in America should be funded equally, funded equally. And in the fact that if in fact that I'm coming up economically challenged because of our history, then you need to lean towards and maybe do 60, 40 in the distribution of funds because I'm a human being and I can learn and I can do business and I can be your boss one day, or maybe I can work for you, but I deserve an equal opportunity to match up for what my journey is in this country so that we can all rise together. And so these things have been unba unbalanced for quite some time. So just getting back real quickly to understanding, you know, the chickens coming home to roost that, um, that we need to understand how government works because it's our government. And the way that most schools are funded, it's funded off the tax dollars based on property tax. And which means is if Bobby's school is surrounded by $100,000 homes plus up to a million. And in that particular district, and it has district representatives, and you get representative government, then that means then there's a higher chance that that school is going to have higher funding, mm -hmm. higher dollar base, because it's, it's based on those properties. So you have a million-dollar property or $100,000 property. I mean, a, a percentage off that is going to be more then, for example, and I was just using a name, but just somebody uh, in a different kind of community that has low income and that they live in or around this school here, it's the same school system, it's the same rules, same regulations and all that kind of stuff, but the funding is different. The funding is different because this school is surrounded by 60, 30, $20,000 homes. Yes, you understand, uh, but think of a percentage off of that if it's, you know, and it really it's got uh, exemptions and out galore when it gets below mm -hmm. a certain amount anyway, but just say they get a percentage off of $20,000. That's different than a percentage off $100,000. Mm -hmm. And then the school's surrounded by low-income housing. Well, that is tax-provided money, so there's no tax dollars going to be coming off that to the school system. And it's surrounded by businesses that may be run down and that are, don't have a thriving business, so they're not putting in. So in other words, yeah, it. it so people say, what's well, all the same? Well, it's not the same. If everything surrounding my school produces a smaller, smaller percentage of tax dollar to invest in my teachers and my books and my school and all that's mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. it's not the same as Bobby's school. But, but, the, but if we're Americans and we are e pluribus unum, though, though many one, then we should be thinking about every school should be the same. Right. Every school, every, every kid should have the same opportunity. As Christians, we definitely should be thinking about, you know, why are the books given to Bobby's school, state of the art, whatever, uh -huh. and going to Shaniqua's school or, or Jennifer's school or, you know, Stan's school or whatever, who's in that surrounding, it's, it's like third, third use underlined. Mm -hmm. uh, the teachers are just trying to barely make it by because they're not getting the same pay. I mean, just the whole mindset of saying, well, if I have to go to that school that's surrounded by that, it's going to be more difficult for me because they don't invest in that school the way they invest in this school and I have a greater chance. That whole environment is against that kid learning. Mm -hmm. In the eyes of God, that's not, that's not, that's not for us as Christians. I mean, we're right. talking about, you know, what America should do, but we as Christians shouldn't be marching in some line saying we don't care about the injustices and the imbalances. Right. And this is the difficult thing. All these things that are happening, yeah, they are unjust. Some of these things that are happening right now, like a chief judge making law and judge making law and these different things going on. But that was unjust for years in America. And we still have those inequalities. The church stands up for those mm -hmm. inequalities. And I really believe this. 
I think it's time for the church to wake up and become, it's have a school, I have two schools. One school is the evangelistic school that is, is, um, that is reaching out to the lost and you know, we hope in this process of education that you're gonna meet God. Mm -hmm. And the other school is ones who know God, who walk with God. Mm. And that school can make the other school a ministry, but there should be two of those types of schools. You shouldn't mix in the ones trying to find God with the ones who are in their fresh walk with God because you'll find out just like the university, 70% of Christians go to public universities. They leave their faith, 70%. Mm -hmm. And the ones that go to Christian universities, it's just because you go to Christian university don't mean you're a Christian or you're walking close to God. 50% mm. leave their faith, which means they go to hell. That's what that means. Yeah. They leave wow. God. We have these statistics for you in the VFN torch. So I think I really, I'm starting to see that uh, potentially begin to pray about, you know what? We need to start two schools. One school needs to be evangelistic, which we can teach everybody, you know, teach uh, Shaniqua or Stan or the surrounded and, unequal circumstances mm -hmm. and, and just poor finances and, and attention into them. And, and if they're not saved, they're, they're, they're Christians, get them into this other particular yeah. school and they can make that school their ministry. And this particular school is it's serious. This is a serious school. We walk with Jesus here. This is what we do. This is, I mean, this somebody says, well, this sounds a lot like teen challenge. You're a teen and this is a challenge. And this is school. <laughs> we don't apologize for Jesus. We don't apologize right. for the word. That's right. You know, we, we teach Christianity. We teach, you know, biblical perspective of the world. And, and you just go, well, I don't know. It's like, ah, you're in the evangelistic school. <laughs> you know, that's cool. We got a, we got a school right here for you. Hopefully you'll find your way to understand that, that God is the creator of the universe. Jesus holds everything together and he's the one that sustains life. And, uh, you see the difference? It's yeah, like, okay, yeah. now we, because what happens is, you know, quite often people say, you know, I just really want Bobby to know Jesus. I just really want Bobby to know Jesus, right? right. Mr. Atomic Bomb Bobby. Right. So you have these people that are laboring in this Christian school, right? They're like, oh, man. technician Bobby, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. And so then, you know, they go, I just want to send them to a Christian school. And so you have these parents who raise their kids in the Lord mm -hmm. and, you know, and that doesn't mean that they're following the Lord, but somebody that, that it worked and you're they're walking and they're serving God and there's their vision for business and ministry is just, just amazing what's where they're going. And all of a sudden Bobby drops in there like a Tom bomb, full of darkness, full of delusion, misleading uh, the folks and your kids and all this kind of stuff. And next thing you know, why am I battling darkness in yeah. a Christian yeah. school? Yeah. And what the parents hope was, by the way, that Bobby would get saved. All right. The hope was that in this Christian school, and that's to me, that's an evangelistic school, which is yeah. great. I mean, it's great. I mean, you can send strong kids there who walk with the Lord, or this school can make that school their mission. They go in there and they uh, do reading, they do tutoring, yeah. they they mentor the kids, they share their testimonies, they I mean, all the wonderful things. But we have one particular school that is intensely concentrated on the fact that Jesus is Lord. This is it. Wow. I mean, this is it. There's there's just it. We don't apologize for it. And whatever happens in the world happens in the world. But the fact is that these kids, both from both those schools, are going to be loosed in the world, and they're going to bring light and hope and, and a new way of looking at things into leadership, into business, and all that. So I really see, I'm starting to see, because you know, how long can you scream at the darkness instead of just saying, no, it's just time to be the light. Mm -hmm. And if that's the way they want to go, if that's the way they want to go, and the history of our nation is like this, by the way. It's just recently, in the recent decades you know the federal government taking over schools it wasn't you know, it wasn't like that but it's time for us and i believe the future leaders of america are going to come from from homeschool they're going to come from schools that we're talking about and many children and the lord show me many children coming to him they're going to they'll, they'll only come to him when somebody actually tells them about him they're not yeah. going to come to him because you know hmm. they have to hear it first mm -hmm. And so I, I'm just looking at that and said, you know, and then you can put the two together. Then you can say, okay, here's a Christian school who's co completely concentrated on Jesus as Lord. And the Bible is not only taught here, it is memorized, hidden in a heart. People abide. They share their abiding experiences. Abiding groups are going on in the school. It's just a powerful thing. It's not perfect. Obviously issues happening and all that because our sin nature, but that's the driving force. The Holy Spirit's invited there to be able to speak to the students, you know, the Pledge of Allegiance and all the things that's said in the prayers. And in addition, their project and their ministry is this other school, which is an evangelistic school where, you know, Susan can send Bobby to in hopes that Bobby will find God in the context. And those two schools will outweigh and outperform, I believe, every other school in the nation. 
you know, along with a, a serious parent that's homeschooling, not just to play around, but a serious mm -hmm. parent that's homeschooling their kid and paying that kind of attention to them. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.